Hello, my name is Asha Arnashela, working as Assistant Professor in Chalpati Institute of Information and Technology. Today, I want to discuss the simple parallel algorithms. So, before going to that, see, I will show you the diagram here. So, here we have the number of uh, processors are there. So here uh, in this diagram we took the 27 as the number and this is divided into two parts 4 and 23 and after that the 4 is divided into again 2 and here means in this diagram so here uh, particular number is divided into n numbers in parallelly so here 4 4 is divided into 8 and minus 4 and also 8 is divided into 5 3 minus 4 is again it is divided into minus 6 and 2 in that way the entire num entire numbers are divided into n numbers in parallel see here so what is a simple parallel algorithm let us take an example here we took an 8 numbers there and we start with 4 processors each of them adds two items in the first step. See, I will show in the figure here. And here, each of them add two items in the first step. And after that, the number of items is halved at every subsequent step. Hence, here we have the log n steps are required for adding n numbers. The processor requirement is order of n. How do we analyze a parallel algorithm? See here the parallel algorithm is analyzed mainly in terms of its time, processor and work complexities. So here the time complexity here we are showing as T of N. How many times, how many time steps are needed? And processor for the process complexity here P of N, how many processors are used? For the work complexity, we are taking W of N. What is the total work done by all processors? So for that, we are taking an example here. Let us see. T of N. It will take the time complexity is order of N log N. For the processor complexity, it is taking order of N. And the for work complexity it is taking order of n log n so here these are the time complexity processor complexity and the work complexities in the parallel algorithm and now we will how we can judge the efficiency we will see here let us say here uh, we are saying a1 is more efficient means a1 is one type of processor uh, it is more efficient than a2 if work complexity w1 of n is equal to order of w2 of n regardless of their time complexities for example here let us see w1 of n is equal to order of n and w2 of n is equal to order of n log n here we are taking w of n is equal to order of n w2 of n is equal to order of n log n now consider the parallel algorithm here a1 and a2 for the same problem for the a1 w of n work in t1 of n time and a2 work complexity is w2 of n work in t2 of n time if w1 of n and w2 of n are asymptotically the same then a1 is more efficient than a2 if T of n is equal to order of T2 of n. See here for example. W of n is equal to W2 of n is equal to order of n. Means here we are taking the work complexity. But for uh, time complexity here T of n is equal to order of log n. T2 of n is equal to order of log square n. Here the work complexity, time complexity is different. But here the work complexity is same. So that's why A1 is more efficient than A2. 
Now, if uh, again we will judge the efficiency, if it is difficult to give a more formal definition for efficiency. Suppose let us take the the same situation. A one and A two are the two processors, and here W of n is equal to order of n log n, and the time complexity for the A one T one of n is equal to order of n, and for A two W two of n is equal to order of n log square n, and T uh, two of n is equal to order of log n. It is uh, here from this. It is difficult to say which one is a better algorithm. So A one is more efficient in terms of work. A two runs much faster in terms of work. A one is more efficient, but A two runs much faster. So both algorithms are interesting, and one may be better than the other depending on a specific parallel missions. Now we will see the optimal parallel algorithms. Consider a problem, and let uh, time complexity t of n be the worst case. Time upper bound on a serial algorithm for an input of length n. Assume that t of n is the lower bound for solving the problem. Hence, we cannot have a better upper bound. Consider a parallel algorithm for the same problem that does W of n work in t of n time. The parallel algorithm is work optional. If W of n is equal to order of t of n, it is a work time optimal. If t of n cannot be improved, again we will see the same diagram here. A simple parallel algorithm. Uh, here we have the we are adding n numbers in parallel see we uh, we saw the diagram here the same number is divided into two equal not equal two parts and uh, each and every number is divided into two parts sub parts in parallelly so from this we will see a work optimal algorithm for adding n numbers for the step 1 use only n by log n process and assign log n numbers to each processor each processor adds log n numbers sequentially in order of log n time in the step 2 we have only n by log n numbers left we now execute our original algorithm on these n by log n numbers from this now time complexity of n is equal to order of log n work complexity w of n is equal to order of n by log n into log n that is nothing but an order of n from this in the next slide why is parallel computing important from this we can justify the importance of parallel computing from the two reasons very large application domains and physical limitations of vlsa circuits and also the computers are getting faster and faster user demands for solving very large problems is growing at a still faster rate and some examples include here weather forecasting simulation of protein folding computational physics etc these are the examples of the parallel computing and now we will see the advantages of the parallel computing here it offers the possibility of overcoming such physical limits by solving problems in parallel in principle thousands even millions of processes can be used to solve a problem in parallel and uh, today's fastest parallel computers have already reached 
teraflop speeds so from this uh, you can understand the simple parallel algorithm so thank you